what's happening everyone? I hope you can see what's going on. I've got you on a body mount today. We're recording. I say we, I mean me. I'm on my own today. I'm fishing somewhere I've never fished before in my life. I'm at Pevensey Bay. Um, this is such a random fishing session. And I mean random. Um, I was literally sitting indoors last night, late last night, thinking, oh, I need to go fishing. It's been two weeks since I've done a video for you guys. I haven't been out anywhere. And I, I, that's a lie. I went and done a bit of carp fishing the other day with Steve. Um, and all day, we sat there, no fish. We completely blanked. Just as I was reeling in my last rod, I... Uh, I managed to look into a 47 and a half pound catfish. It took me 25 minutes to get it in. It was an absolutely amazing fish. I know carp anglers don't like catfish, but I'm not a proper carp angler. I'm just a just the sort of person that likes behind, to sit behind some rods at a lake and chill out, you know? This is why I go to places where it should, should be easy to catch fish. Again, nothing's guaranteed, we know, but so, so yeah, today I'm at Pevensey. If you're getting wind noise, again, I'm really, really sorry. Uh, and if the camera's a bit pissed, again, I'm really, really sorry. But I've got my phone strapped to me, my body, and I'm trying to set up, I've got one rod out. I'm just gonna quickly chuck a rig on this and flick this out, and then we'll um, we'll get down to, we'll get down to business. But this is stuff you don't normally see, so why not? Let's, um, everyone knows how to set a rod up, but you know. You know, I'll show you the bait, show you my rigs, I might as well show you everything as I've got you on the old body. This is what I use when I do my, um, for my scrap channel guys, when I put my scrap videos up, I'll use this because, well, you need two hands. I should have used this a long time ago really for the fishing, but it's, it's the thing, it's sitting a bit, it's sitting a bit wonky. So, rigs, look at that, that's clean, isn't it? That is clean, the top of that box. I'm impressed, oh, I'm well impressed. I mean, I know it's a bit, and it's a little bit not clean, but like, no, it's pretty, look, who remembers these bad boys? I don't go anywhere without these. I don't go anywhere without these. They're always in the top of this box. So that is a memory for the OG fans on the channel. What we got here? I don't want them, I don't want them. Rigs. Gavin's rigs. Beautiful. So what are we fishing for today? Today, we are fishing for, it's probably self-explanatory, I'm not fishing just for place. I'm fishing for flatfish. I'm fishing for anything that's not a whiting or a dogfish. Um, now, somewhere I've always wanted to fish and never, just never got round to it. Pevensey. It, I like, never got round to it. So, again, this was a fault late last night. I didn't have no bait. None of the other lads could come with me. Matt's busy. Steve Steve can't get out until his missus gets home from work. Sorry, oh, I ran out of recording time on my phone. So yeah, Steve could make it. I'm, uh, I've got to be down the south coast tonight anyway for scrapping to make a video down there. So I'm halfway to where I want to be. Although it's a bloody mission to get down here from where I live. Like It's less distance than Brighton, but it takes an extra 25 minutes because you have to come through all the country lanes. I'm not going to tie that on yet. Um, I'm normally a little bit more organised than this. Normally the rig's not so tangled, but it's one I used last week when I was place fishing. Not last week, week before. That's it. So yeah, um... I had no bait, no nothing, and uh, I thought it didn't. It nearly didn't happen. I had to. I I wanted blacks, um, black lug that is, um, and I knew Medway tackle supplies wouldn't have any because I supply them, um, and I well I just no they haven't got none. So the next port of call was I knew there was a tackle shop here, one that I've never been in before, and one that I will always remember because it's called the Angler's Den, and in Gillingham where I live, we used to have a shop called the Angler's Den since closed down now um so it's just one that i've always remembered so quick google search this morning i rung him up um and he had he had a spare score of lug which was amazing um he also had some ragworm so as it as it as there wasn't much lug available i grabbed i grabbed well i said half a pound and apparently that's four packs they sell it by the two ounce down here um, but I've had a look at them and I now, I now know why they sell them in such small quantities. Because they are very small worm. But that's not a complaint and I promise guys that is not a complaint. I love my tackle shop more than any tackle shop in the world. But sometimes the ragworm we get at Medway Tackle, when they're, when they're that long, 
sometimes are just no good for flatfish fishing. And today I'm fishing for flatfish and that is perfect. That is perfect. Th these are these are the perfect size for what I want. They are one bait size. Um, again, if you're fishing for stingrays, they're not they're not what you want. What you want is the stuff that I get at home. Um, again, obviously, with a big rag you can cut them down, but it is nice to put on a whole ragworm with its tail kicking about itself. There's nothing better. So that is um, that is that. Obviously, I've got a score of blacks as well. So that's my bait for the day. Um, Listen, I'll always shout out Medway Tackle Supplies, but I can't, I can't say f thank you enough to the lads at the Anglers Den for sorting me out with this bait at, like, at short notice. Um, I'm not sponsored or anything by them. They don't even know who I am, which is actually sometimes quite nice. Um, that there, look at that, look. That is a perfect bait. Little bit of towel. Just pull them beads down. Little bit of towel, lovely. Now, I've already sent one rig out without beads. Um, and this one has got beads. I was kind of hoping that I might see a place today, but the water's very, very dirty. And I just can't see it. Um, if I'm honest, I've got a feeling we're probably going to end up getting plagued with whiting. But it's nice to be on the beach. The weather's not the best. Yesterday would have been the best day. And to be fair, it was yesterday's weather's fault that I'm actually here today, I suppose, because oh, I've got no rag. Where's bloody Steve when you need him? Because the weather was so nice yesterday, I was sort of I was out and about doing a few bits yesterday with the boss lady. And I was like, oh, it was nice to spend the day with her, but it would have also been nice to do a bit of fishing. And again, we haven't had the right winds the last week and a half, and we haven't got no decent weather coming up. So the weather window really is is knackered for the place fishing for, I would say, another couple of weeks at least. Um, but you never know, we might get lucky. There's nothing in the rule book to say that place won't bite when the water's dirty. It's just a well-known fact that the fishing for place is better when the water is clear. I don't know why that is. I have no idea. Probably because they obviously love a bit of attraction. They love a bit of movement. They're quite predatory fish. I see a good bloke last year on Brighton Beach law fishing um, for, for place, and he had a couple. I want to say, just like, just gently tugging back a, a, a jelly worm on the bottom, very, very lightly. And he didn't just have one either, so it wasn't a fluke, he had a couple. So it can be done. And there we are. One fixed ball rod. One. Goes out well, that reel. Um, yeah, that's that then. Well, I better leave you to it. I'm going to sit in my bivvy and get out of this wind. If you're really copping the wind, I'm sorry. Um, well, hopefully, I'll bring you back to a fish. Well, I'm just going to fill this one up most of the way. There's definitely something on the end of it. On the bottom up looks like a, uh, a carrier bag to be honest, yeah. And the top up is sort of target. Flatfish. Oh actually. Oh it's actually a little place and all. Oh that's that's even better. Yeah. It's only a little one. But first fish, we will take that guys. It again, it is a very, very small place. But I'm happy with that. We'll get rid of the plastic bag. Well, I'll get this little fellow unhooked and get him back, and then we'll bring the other one in. It's been out. This is black lug. This rod. I'm going to try and keep it. Try and keep it like that. Fish one with blacks, and fish one with um, rag, and try and. And the other one, to be fair, the one with rag's got um, got the beads on as well. This one's completely plain, but this might be a bit of a pain to get out. So we'll um, we'll bring you back. He reeled this uh, reeled this fixed ball rod in live with me. I've no idea if there's anything on it. I'm just in a bite because it's too windy. But it feels heavy enough, but I know it's very it's quite shallow here. I also think I've set up miles too far away from the water. But not being here, not fishing here before, I don't know where the line is. And normally you can tell by the weed, but there's hardly anything. Normally you can tell by the rubbish as well. 
And that's another thing I'd like to say. Fair play to the uh, to the local anglers and the people of Pevensey because this beach is probably one of the cleanest beaches for rubbish I've seen in a long time. So very well done. Um, I also have a feeling now that I've caught my other rod because this is bloody heavy. I think I'm only using it. Oh no, I've just pulled it out of the ground. I don't think it was completely out of the ground. It's still weighty. No, it's gone light. Well, I don't know. I'm not sure if there's anything on this one, guys. So you've never fished in a beach before. I don't know what the tide runs like here. I don't know if I'd have got away with plane leads. What's coming up this beach? Anything? Anything? Well, I must be nearly there now. Oh, we have got a fish. Let's go down and have a look. Sorry for the wind, guys. That one is a dab. and a dab and you can tell a dab very easily because it's pretty much see-through I won't want you guys to see that yeah yeah they're pretty much see-through um, which is probably one of the biggest giveaways I'm not gonna get that one up nicely go on got it bit me up Love catching flatfish. Bye, mate. But well, that was on the rack. So the black's picking up so far. Black lug has had a place, and the ragworm has had a dab. No whiting, so I'm going to take that as a win. There we are, lads. Now we've had the we've had the trio. Now, now we've had a flounder. It's a bloody good flounder and all that. That is a really good flounder. And then we've had a little baby dab to go with it. I'm happy with that. That was on the black lug rod. Again, just checking baits. Seeing bites is not great today. But I'm not I'm not massively trying hard. I'm just here to chill out and have a bit of a, a bit of a nice day flatty bashing really. Um I'm gonna go and get these little fellas back and then I'll bring in the other rod. I'll probably bring his back live on that one. I should have done with that because to be fair that big, that big flounder was on the bottom hook and coming up through the waves it looked really quite cool actually um, but it is what it is so we've had place, dabs and flounder now I'm happy with that well happy with that especially for a, a nice chilled session you know it's, it's not too um, pressured and I'm just here enjoying myself Let's have a look at this one together. Oh, I'm trying to get the best angles I can on the camera. There could be a fish there. Let's get a bit closer to the water. It's all of a sudden that's just flown up this beach that water it was it looked like it was staying really far away earlier I've got to get a new continental rod this is too heavy this one I need a nice little vicelli or something. Is there a fish? I don't know if there is. Oh, there is. Oh, another nice flounder by the looks of it on the bottom hook. Yeah, look at that. That is 
That's a cracking flounder. That's two really, really nice fish, you know. Two really nice fish on the rag. Yeah. It's mad because the other flounder that I've just had, it did have, it did have a few orange spots. But this one, nothing. All right, let's see if I can do the old through the gills on the unhooking trick without touching his gills. Because the hook is there. Have I got it out for him? Move this out of the way. Lovely jubbly. Nice and gentle. And he should go back because flounders are hard as nails. Gone. See you later, dude. If something's absolutely clean the top hook. Oh, I'm happy with that. What a lovely little session. All right, in a bit. Right then. So as the title suggests, how to catch flatfish. Now, if I'm honest, I've only just thought of that. And I thought to myself, that's what I'm gonna call this video, how to catch flatfish. Is there a way of, is there something to really, really just target flatfish? I don't think there is. Not in this country. But mate, listen, maybe in, um, different parts, different areas of the country. If I'm fishing up the river for flounders, then I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using maddies, lugworm tip maddies, or maybe some of these small rag, if I could get hold of them, which I can't normally get hold of them around my way. Um, in general, fishing for flatfish, especially if you're fishing for flatfish dabs, flounders, place off the beach, generally, now this is not every time, generally, you're using small worm baits, um, smaller hooks, smallish hooks, clip down rigs. Sometimes they can be that little bit further out, especially place at the start of the year, but they do, they do end up moving closer. But that's not to say that they don't stray and come in a little bit closer because they do. Um, I'm gonna say a two hook flapper rig would catch them. Any rig would catch a flatfish. If they're there, they're there. I don't really think there's any rhyme or reason on how to just catch flatfish unless, again, you are somewhere in an estuary like where I live up the Medway and you're targeting flounders, um, then you'd want to use maddies or something like that. But that's not to say you wouldn't go and catch one on a lump of mackerel um, because you, you just don't know. Fishing is fishing. Um, so if you've never caught a flatfish before, get on Google. Um, give your local tackle shop a, 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 a bell. A general rule of thumb is a nice flat beach. I mean, if you live where, if you're lucky enough to live where you've got a nice sandy beach, they can always be good for flatfish. But then, places like Brighton is a, is a big pebbly beach, and, there, and that's really good. All right, it's sand out in front, but not a lot of people know what's in front. It could be mud, could be sand, could be anything. So, my general rule of thumb is if you don't know ask there's loads of ways of asking there's facebook groups all right nine times out of ten you get you get absolute idiots um people that don't want to tell you nothing but are quite happily comment just a stupid comment just to think they're funny well we're really they're not that's one thing that does sort of get to me a little bit about facebook and all the fishing groups is it doesn't seem like there's anyone willing to help anymore there's there's plenty of people wanting to post their pictures and be glory hunters and oh look at me I caught this and I caught that and I caught this and I caught that but when someone asks for a bit of help oh wait how did you get on or where did you catch that I don't want to know well I can understand people do do a hell of a lot of research into finding their marks they really really do and they put the time and the effort in that's fair enough well if you don't want to tell no one don't tell no one but then also don't post your pictures gloating about it because all it does is annoys people uh, and me it, I couldn't care less because I'm, I don't go fishing all the time to catch fish. 
today I was out just as a jolly, just to uh, just to get out and wet a line and chill out a bit. It's been a bonus that I've caught some fish. Um, but you see some people on there, youngsters, whatever, people that are newcomers, they're new to it. And all they want to do is get a little bit of help. So sometimes Facebook's not the only way. Local tackle shops generally don't let you down. I think longer the day's gone off tackle shops telling you this and telling you that just to sell a bit of bait. Because after time, tackle shops nowadays ain't got no bait. Um, oh, two seconds, guys, sorry. Yeah, so that, for me, my go-to flatfish rig is a torque loop rig. Always, always a loop rig. Oh, well, my scratching rig. So any time I'm fishing for smaller species of fish will always be a loop rig. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Small baits sometimes, the, uh, the odd bead, bit of bling works well. But again, I'm using one with and one without. All right, I'm using different baits on both, but they're both fishing about the same, to be fair. I don't think, and again, the water's dirty, so the beads are not really doing anything to help me out today at all. Maybe giving it a bit of movement, but they're not giving it, the, the colour wouldn't matter. Um, it wouldn't matter at all. Hopefully that's helped. I'm just looking back now, I'm thinking back what I've just said, and does it make sense? I think it does. You just really you've got to get out there and give it a go. Research. That's the main thing. It, again, catching the catching the flatfish as you see today is there's nothing there's nothing hard about it. I'm just putting bait on my hooks and casting that just like anyone else would. I'm not casting particularly far, not in this wind anyway. I couldn't even if even if I could cast far in this wind you'd struggle. Um, all you've got to really do is find out where they can be located, which locations. South coast at the minute, I would have thought all the way along the south coast. Dabs come up in most places along the country. Flounders, again, most estuaries, rivers, places like that along the country. Um, and place wherever you get a nice bit of clear water. When the weather's right, that's where you'll find place. Time to reel in, people. <clears throat> Should we do it together? start off with this one so far I'm gonna say that the black lug has produced a bit better this is where I'm reeling and so far you've seen every time I've reeled in and I'm yet to reel in a blank but this feels like it could be the first one because there's no weight there at all if there is a fish it'd be a small one Bloody windy. Is that a fish? Looks to me like another little dab. Or flounder. What is that? That is another little flounder. Nicely looked as well, makes a change. Lovely jubbly. Beautiful. Let's quickly get him back. Mr. Maddy man would have loved this today. This is his sort of fishing, he loves it. Absolutely loves it. But couldn't get out early enough, which was a shame. Maybe next week we'll come and have another go at this. Oh, uh. here we go. Right, I'll get this baited up and get it out again, and then we'll uh, we'll reel the other one in, and we'll I'll bring you back for that. Right, other one's rebaited and put back. Now we get this one out. Oh, again, doesn't feel like there's much going on with this. 
Oh, mate. Oh, I don't know. Do I think my lead keeps catching the bottom? Because it's, I think it's shallow here. So when the grapplers on the leads, the spikes of the lead catch the bottom, it just makes it feel like it's going that little bit heavy again. You know what I mean. Coming off the last break up. Oh, that was heavy. There's got to be a fish there. Yeah, there is. No idea what yet. Oh, it's another double shot. Let's go down. And lift. Is that a double shot of dabs? No, it looks like a dab. Definitely a dab on the bottom hook. Lovely fish, and what is that top? And another flounder on the top, but a smaller one. So the rag does seem to be the rag's. Oh. Yeah, it is a flounder. I know it's got orange spots, but it is still a flounder. Or is it a place? Oh, I've confused myself now. Yeah, no, it's more the diamond shapes of play, uh, flounder. Um, yeah, the rag does seem to be picking out the smaller fish. Right, that one's not going to come out easy. So we'll take that one back. Will this one come out easy? Yeah, it's only there, look. Drop it in. Twist it round. Lovely. Yeah. Dab's back. Right. I'll get this flounder on up, get it baited up, and go again. Well, I've just reeled in my first chuck without a fish. So I'm changing things up, black lug, and then I've, I've head hooked, well, pretty much head hooked, not right through the head, but about 10, 15 mil down from the head. A couple of these really smaller ragworm, they're basically big maddies. Um, I've just gone through the, through the, through the, just to see how many rag I had left, and I had absolutely loads. So I've head hooked a couple, give it a little bit more attraction, not because I'm trying to wrinkle out more fish, Maybe maybe that might attract a bigger fish with a little bit more movement because, uh, again, a few of the fish I've had today, I'm not complaining, but they've been on the smaller side and it would just be nice to see a bigger one. The flounders I've had have been lovely, but it'd be nice to see a decent-sized place or something. Um, now, with this one, I'm going to... I'll drop that one in short when I put it out earlier. The other one, I'm going to drop this one in short now. Um, oh, nice. With them uh, little teasers on the bottom, should we say. Um, and then when I reel that one in in a minute, I'll probably put that one out a bit longer. Unless that's got an half decent fish on it. But I'll, if, if it has, I'll obviously let you know. Right, the closing approach didn't work. All that happened was they stole my ragworm off the bottom of here. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave that lug on. I'm going to add another bit of black lug to each hook. I'm going to leave all that on. And I'm going to clip it down this time and I say give it the beans. I'm going to hit it as hard as I possibly can. I've got to say, as much as I love the ragworm, the lug isn't that great. It's a bit, I think it's a bit small. It's not a bit small, it's the right size for doing what I'm doing, it's the perfect size. But where it's a bit old, it's a, it's a few days old this, um, yeah, and it's not in the best of shape. Listen, it's ideal for dab fishing, but I'm not just here for dabs. It'll do the job. It's doing the job. These um these manky ones are alright for topping up the bait, I suppose. Yeah, so the enclose pull up the sand in there. Yeah, the enclose hasn't worked. Two both rods now have dropped I've dropped them both short. The other one's back out now. But yeah, I've dropped them both short, both tried in short, and both times I've reeled in with nothing. So, I'm going to send it again. You may be wondering what this electrical tape is doing on my lead. I fished, oh, I don't know, somewhere, a few months back. And I remember putting electrical tape around my prongs just to hold them in the ground a little bit more. Um, 
it actually worked as well for that for that whatever reason I've done it for. I can't remember why now, but I just haven't got around to taking it off. So my loop rig clips on the imp, the bottom hook. I've showed this so many times, and I'm sure every channel on YouTube has probably showed this as well. So it's clipped to the imp there, and then you come down to the cascade swivel. The top hook clips to that. These are all Gavman's rigs, by the way, from uh, Gavman Shore Rigs. Oh, pull the stop knot down or your bait flies up. I think I've come unclipped now. No, I haven't. That goes on there. And that hook clips on there. Just like that. And then you probably can't see it because it's, oh, it's clear line. But there, you have a loop. Which is why it's called a loop rig. Job done. Right, if I'm honest, I wouldn't say I'm getting bored, but fishing's gone quiet. I reckon I'm going to blow this up. I've got a feeling this is going to birdie on me. Oh, it's close. Woo. Lovely jubbly. I've got to get some lighter gear for flatty fishing. Just don't do much of it. Maybe I will this year because I'm not going to be travelling all up and down the country chasing chasing stupid fish. Um, when I say stupid fish, I mean taupe and things like that. I say I'm not. I've actually got a holiday booked to North Wales this year. Um, so, yeah, I'm taking the gear with me, definitely. I've got a week with the kids and obviously the boss in uh, in Paul from a dog or something, I think it's called. So, whilst they're of whilst they're uh, sitting in the clubhouse of an evening watching people prat about and dance around, I think I'll be in Anglesey because it's only up the road ish. Having a go for a taupe. I've still yet to get one off the shore. And I really, really want one. I need, once I've done it, I've got it out of my system. Same as escape fishing, although that's coming up to two years. And um, I'd quite like to go and get another one, I think, off the shore. I watched a YouTube video the other day, the Guru team went up. Uh, Dean Macy, and I can't remember the other two lads' names, but they're like world champion anglers in match fishing. Um, as in, like, river, car, freshwater match fishing. And um, they had loads with Lee Taylor off the boat. And it just don't interest me catching off the boat. I wouldn't mind getting one in a sip, because that'd be an achievement. But in the but on a big boat, um, we spoke to Lee when me and Luke was up there in Scotland oh, a couple of years ago now. And he actually come and met us. We was talking to him, a very, very nice bloke, actually. And, and he said that having 50 on the boat in a day is not uncommon. That's like, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, really, isn't it? Um, and and he, I'm sure he even said one day he had the same fish three times. Three times in one day. It's just that there's not really much skill involved there. I mean, the skippers know what they're doing. They're absolutely amazing. And, and without them, yeah, it, it, they probably would be. You're not just going to go and find them yourself. It's not that easy. Um, the skippers obviously know where they are, but I don't know. I may go back. I may go back. It won't. I don't think it'll be this year because I've got. I'm going to Lanzarote as well this year at some point in September. I think we're going. That's just me and the boss, no kids, and I'm not taking my fishing rod either. I'm a bit gutted, but it's for the boss. Anyway, hopefully we'll see a fish soon. What's up everyone? My phone messed up royally earlier. I don't know what was going on. It stopped recording sound, so I don't really know what happened. Obviously I've finished fishing. Um, I've done a bit of recording. Uh, I've come up to my last cast, said this is going to be my last cast because the cast before that I'd had a dogfish. And well, first one of the year, we all know how I feel about dogfish. Um, 
So yeah, that was that. I had a dogfish and then I reeled in my last cast um, on both rods. I had another little dab on the on the other on the one of the rods and I had a little rocklin on the other rod. So we had place, flounder, dabs, dogfish and rocklin today, no whiting, which is a surprise. It's a nice surprise, but it's a surprise. Um, but yeah, it was a lovely little session to be fair. It was a nice little session. I've got a bit of ragworm left over as well. Whether I'll use that at the weekend up the river, I'm not sure. Steve's been fishing the river quite a lot this week. Um, I think he said he's had five sessions. Now, he's only been fishing for sort of an hour and a half, two hours max, maybe two and a half. But he's had one little bass. The river at the minute is completely dead. Um, we're not sure exactly why. I've got a feeling it's because of sprats in the river and the fish are only interested in sprats and herrings. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Oh, excuse me. It's now nine o'clock at night and I'm driving home. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I was happy with today's video. I've just looked back through some of the footage just to make sure none of, none, none of the rest of it was mucked up. Um, and again, my camera angles are absolutely shockingly crap. And I know that. And I think you know that too. I'm hoping you'll still watch and drop me a like, because every little helps. Um, when will the next fishing trip be? I have no idea. I didn't even know today was happening until about this time last night, actually. And I still didn't know, even then, I had to find out if I could get bait. So, again, spare of the moment trips. Um, but hopefully one of the boys will be with me next week. Whether it be Steve or Matt or trying to get Nafe out carp fishing for months. We did went we did go we did try and go a couple of weeks ago when we got there the lake was frozen so that ruined that. Um, but yeah well thanks everyone for watching if you haven't subscribed please please do um, leave a comment leave a like even if it's an horrible comment still leave it I can deal with it but it just helps the channel. Um, thanks everyone I'll see you in the next one.